Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let me make sure yeah, I'm good. Hey, Robert Lewis here. Lynn to Texas. Lynn to Texas.com in association with Open Mortgage. Just wanted to hop on. As you see the title, it says you are not guaranteed to get a VA loan, even if you have a certificate of eligibility. This is home ownership month, home buying month. It's summertime. It's the home buying season. We're real busy. And this week I've had two veterans want to apply to see if they can purchase a home. To a man, they both were under the impression or they assumed that they were automatically guaranteed to get a loan because they qualify to have or to use their VA certificate of eligibility for home purchase purposes. So one of them was very, very livid. And I understand uh, he, he was just upset because, uh, you know, he was from the mindset I've served my country and, you know, I did all this time in the military and he just thought he was just automatically guaranteed to get this loan. And so the reason I'm doing the video today is to let anybody or to inform anyone out there that may have access to a certificate of eligibility because of your service, irregardless of how you how you came about it, reservist, National Guard, uh, full-time active duty, or if you're a veteran or some type of service-related, service-connected disability, you are not guaranteed to get a VA loan just because you have a VA certificate of eligibility. You have to qualify with a lender, such as myself, and you have to go through the regular vetting for being approved for a loan. We're going to verify your income to show that you have the ability to repay the loan. We're going to look at your credit report, your credit history. So there's certain there's a certain middle score, a certain credit report number that we're looking for. If we pull a tri-merge, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, we're going to throw out the high number, throw out the low, and look at the middle score for myself uh, and where I'm originating, we can go down to a middle score as low as 580. Um, but it's not just a score. We're going to look at your credit history as a whole, the past and current, to make sure that you know you meet the underwriting guidelines that we need to make sure you meet to extend credit to you. So income, past credit, past and current credit history, right? Uh, we're going to look at your assets. Um, because this is another misnomer. I had a third VA customer this this week that we've uh, qualified. We're moving forward with that customer, but he assumed that 100% meant that he didn't have any, any monies out of pocket. And that's another misnomer. The VA eligibility covers or get, gets rid of the down payment one would have to put down. <clears throat> Excuse me. So easy example, $100,000 purchase price. You negotiate a contract with a seller and you guys, he, they agree to sell it to you for 100, you agree to buy it for 100. Well, if you have access to a VA loan, then that means you can finance $100,000. Simply it. But you still have closing costs. A lot of people don't understand closing costs. And I want to educate you so you understand. So closing costs are made up of lender fees. That's me. Title company fees, that's the, the third party disinterested place that um, runs title search to make sure the property can convey from the seller to you without any encumbrances. Um, that's the biggest thing that they do. They, they do a title search and guarantee title so that you're assured that the property is yours legally. Um, and there's other things that they do in that process, but the title company, which is typically chosen by the seller of the home, okay? So lender fees, title company fees, you have appraiser, an appraisal, pardon me, with an appraiser, possibly have a survey, right? There's other third-party fees. And then a part of the closing costs, these aren't closing costs, we call them prepaid items. That's for the establishment or to establish your escrow account so that when the taxes and the insurance come due on an annual basis, because 98% of the loans that I do are fixed interest rate loans, that have escrow accounts. 
Okay, meaning when you make that one payment a month on your mortgage, all of it doesn't go towards the principal and interest, but a portion of it is set aside for your taxes and insurance so that when the renewal comes, the servicer, the place that you're making your money payments to on a monthly basis, pardon me, has the money in an escrow account to say, hey, here's a thousand dollars to the insurance company to renew your insurance. OK, now. I, I run across this all the time. I don't want to escrow. That's fine. We don't have to argue about it. Put down 20% or more and you won't have to escrow, right? What you need to understand is that servicers, lenders make a lot of money with escrow accounts. And if you are or do have the ability to put down 20 or more percent, more than likely, if you don't want to escrow, you're going to pay some type of penalty, quarter of a point, three eighths of a point up front to the lender. Because if you look at it, if you have a thousand mortgages that you're collecting this money from every month, they're probably investing that money and doing whatever to make more money with it. So if you don't give them the option to do that, they're going to hit you with some type of penalty up front, typically a quarter of a point. So I, I can hear the hate right now. The deal is this. You don't have to do any of that. Just pay, pay cash for your house. He that has the gold makes the rules. You see what I'm saying? So you don't want to escrow 20 or 20 percent or more. And you're probably going to pay a penalty at a quarter of a point to, you know, three eighths of a point. I haven't seen it any higher than that uh, to not have to escrow. And I just explained why. So um, that's broken down in your monthly payment. So those things comprise or make up closing costs. So irregardless of the loan type, guys, that's an issue that runs across my desk all the time. And I want my clients that I deal with. And even if you don't deal with me, if you're just seeing this, you can ask whoever that lender is that you know, like, and trust that you want to deal with. Explain the closing costs to me. Okay. Because in the VA scenario, yeah, you don't have a down payment, but you could have closing costs. And I say could, because there's instances where the sellers, and in most of my cases, the sellers are contributing towards those closing costs to where my buyers, irregardless of the loan type, VA, FHA, uh, or uh, otherwise are getting some type of contribution from the seller to help defray those closing costs. So there's a way to do it. But worst case scenario is you need to be thinking in your mind, okay, how much are the closing costs? I tell people a good rule of thumb is 6%. That might sound like a lot. You might not have to use near as much as that, but if you can think that way, hey, you just saved up those monies. And if you don't have to touch them, you know, that's furniture or whatever, or you could have a cushion. <laughs> To where when life happens, you know, you got some money saved. I know that's a novel concept, but you know, six percent of the of the sales price, six grand, right on a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, six grand. So if you're a USDA, I mean a USDA or a VA guy or gal, a person, you don't have a down payment necessarily, but you could have closing costs. And I looked at up to six percent, right? Okay. And so if you save those monies, you don't have to use them. You're not, you're not mad. But as you're thinking and getting ready, hey, I want to buy a home. That's the thing that I'm seeing that derails a lot of people. It takes the sales wind, wind out of their sales is because they all they focus on is the down payment. It's not just down payment, it's closing costs. And for my VA people, just because you qualify for a certificate of eligibility, that does not guarantee that you're going to get a loan. Keep that in mind. So with that being said, you need to get to your lender if you're going to borrow money sooner than later. You need to talk to your lender before you go talk to a realtor. I know the National Association of Realtors has done a bang up job. And I know really that's the bait. That's the end goal is the home. And, and you kind of look at the loan as, as an afterthought. Really have to rethink those things. You have to look at the loan up front so that you can know and understand what it is that you need uh, as a potential home buyer and, and as it pertains to mortgage financing. And you can understand the terms because in most cases, doing a mortgage loan, borrowing those monies is the biggest loan that most people will make in their entire lives. So it bears, uh, it goes without saying that you should invest a little time. And I know we're in a microwave society, but uh, spend a little time, understand what it is that you will possibly be responsible for. And then that always lends to the best process uh, possible so that you can have a nice, smooth process and get into your home and start making those memories. So my time is up.
I thank you for yours. Robert Lewis, Lynn to Texas. Hey, Jason, how you doing, man? Lynn to Texas, Lynn to Texas .com in association with Open Mortgage. And uh, my NN NMLS license number is 180100. And yes, we are an equal opportunity lender. Until the next time, peace.